Hello and welcome to this topic for today. So here is my um, my objectives for today. So going from there, we're going to move on and um, start with objective 1.4. So here we have our directories and subdirectories for data organization. This is probably the most important topic that you will study in geomatics. You have to be organized. That is so essential. We deal with so much data in geomatics that if you're not organized, it, it you're going to lose things. And there's really nothing more frustrating than losing a file that you thought that you saved or that you thought that you had. So it's essential to know where you're saving files, how you're saving it, the name that you're saving it as, the version number that you're using. Because if you don't, it's going to be lost and then you're going to have to start all over and you're going to get very, very frustrated. So saying that, we have our directories. So organization, like I said, is very important. And knowledge of where it is, what it is named, and the structure of the naming is essential. So again, stating that, um, if you if you're working in a group, for example, for your next two years, and you come across a a file, and you're like, oh, I wonder what this is. If you have to say that before even looking at like before you're if you can't say that by looking at the name of the file, then obviously you don't know what you've saved it as and you don't know what that file is and you have to open it. Now that is great and handy until you are on a different computer that doesn't have compatible software for that. So if you don't have a good naming system in place then it is then you're going to lose something and there's really honestly nothing more frustrating than coming across something that is that you don't know what it is or that somebody sends you and you don't know what version number it is and it, it's backwards and everything else. It's for a different class and you overwrite something, right? So making sure that you know where something is so you don't overwrite it and making sure that you understand um, what it's named is also very important. So we use something called a street, uh, sorry, a tree structure. That tree structure is something you would be very, very familiar with because Windows uses it. Um, if you use Linux, Linux uses it. I don't know about Macs. I assume it's very similar as well. It is a structure that you see all the time. Now here is the tree structure. And here we have a root directory that is found right here. Now in Linux, we call it root. In Windows, we it is like your C drive. You can also consider your root directory to be something that you use as a functional starting point. So whatever it opens up to right away. So this is, that's always the starting point of the tree structure. It's kind of the root of the tree. And then it breaks out into trunks. So those trunks are the main directories. So I have the main directory one, main directory two, main directory three in this example. And then it breaks, each of those break up into more branches, like from the trunks to the branches. And we get directory, subdirectories. And then you can have more subdirectories underneath if you need and then you have your files um, that fall within those subdirectories. Now again, making sure that you don't name them directory and subdirectory because you'll never know what those are. And so that um, that's the main structure of this. So I'm just going to end the slideshow and I'm going to open up a different software and I'm gonna show what I have here. So in my root directory, I have directory, subdirectory. Sometimes I can have several subdirectories. Sometimes I can have sub subdirectories, right? So I can keep creating folders as I move along. Right here is an example of what I have on my own hard drive. So I have a hard drive and that is my root directory. I have a teaching folder that tells me that that's what I do with teaching. I have an HR folder for my work. Then I have my fall semester that I create another folder so I know that fall 2020 if I need anything for this semester I can go into that folder. Then I have my maps to a four class which is what I'm teaching here and then I go into my powerpoints I have activities and this year new is videos. I save these all to my hard drive in these folders and, ex and name them so that I can find them. For example my powerpoints are referred to as my objectives so I say objectives 1.4 through 1.6. So that is my um, that that is my 
my structure and you don't necessarily have to use that but you can and then um, and and that really wraps up the entire objective so if you are looking to to do the an example there is the activity that is available in D2L so and in your your workbooks so if you want to work through that and give those a try then that would be your objectives that um, that would satisfy objective 1.4 this is also something very easy for me to put on an exam because you can use tabs or hyphens to be able to identify a tree structure so be aware of that as well so, and we will be moving on to objective 1.5 in the next video.